Team FM with the morning mix, me, Rebecca, and Pastor Charles, along with special guests in the studio, Steve Christie and Pastor Dan Bellavia. 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 I can't take it. I wanted to do it right again. That's all right. I'm, That's all right. It's, you know, it is good to have. It, it increases exposure. Every time you have yes. to say it over again, it's good. It'll, yeah. it'll, it'll burn into the Good brain. idea, Rebecca. I, yeah, I did that on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go with that. But I have tried so hard to mentally think it your last name correctly, and I keep saying it wrong. You know what? A lot of people, uh, if you look at the Latin roots, it's Bella. Yeah. Via. Just Bella, Via. Yeah, yeah, just, now you made it yeah, easy. Yeah, I won't sure. mess it up anymore. That, and, and, and Latin was important to, to Luther as well. So okay. it's a good segue. There you it's go. Segue. This is perfect. Yeah. And you are here for a reason. Yeah, what, was it his name actually like a Luther? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we spoke with you, gentlemen, just a few moments ago um, about the event that you have coming up October 29th at your church, Pastor Dan, at First Baptist Church of Greater Toledo right here in Holland. So let's talk more about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were talking earlier about the Luther's uh, primary uh, change that he brought to the world, which was reclaiming Scripture as the center, reclaiming Scripture as the, uh, the truth, the prime source of truth in the world. Now, uh, we refer to that today with an understanding that, that Luther's opinion was that he talked about sola scriptura which meant that the scripture was the primary source of truth. It was the only thing to look at as far as if you're looking for the truth. Now, Luther was searching for a particular truth, though. Mm -hmm. Luther knew his own sinfulness, and he was constantly in mourning because of it. They say that Luther uh, almost annoyed the other priests because he was in the confessional booth so frequently. And he didn't really understand how he could be forgiven. Uh -huh. And he didn't think that, his, that all of his works piled up would ever br gr bring him the forgiveness uh, that he needed. He found in the book of Romans an understanding that forgiveness wasn't about doing good things. It was about receiving the grace of Jesus Christ through faith. And so that understanding of receiving grace through faith becomes the second and the third solo. The second one was sola gratia, which means salvation is only by grace. And the third, sola Christus, which is only in Christ. And so when we have an understanding of scripture, it leads us to the grace of Jesus Christ. And that really, for many Christians, and for, for me personally, is the story of salvation. Amen. Yeah. So, so talk to us, uh, so you can give us the other two, mm -hmm. and then talk to us about why you feel that this, the 95 to 5, is key to the body of Christ today? Yeah, well, like it says, it brings us back to what the real authority of Scripture you know, is. Prior to that, the authority was the church, and unfortunately people were assuming that what the church was teaching was correct. And when, you're, when your authority is a group of fallible men, uh, be it right. members in the church, there's that opportunity for uh, uh, corruption you know, to uh, creep in, and that's what was happening. Um, Luther actually believed as a Catholic priest in um, the indulgences, but what was happening there was the abuses of plenary indulgences where people feel that they could actually uh, buy their way into heaven quicker by decreasing or eliminating their time in purgatory. Right. You know, and, and when Luther uh, nailed these 95 theses, he thought that he was actually doing a good thing. In fact, he dedicated it to the Pope and, and, and submitted to the Archbishop, not knowing that they were the two that were actually behind it. You know, so it, it brought the authority back to Scripture, and as um, the uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in the Book of Romans, the righteous shall live by faith, and that was really the pivotal moment for Luther, you know, which actually launched the Reformation. Yeah, and, and so now, which because you know to try to say, oh man, you know, you have these ninety-five theses, right? And I mean, and they're they're in, they're intense. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know, they're, yeah. they're not yeah. like. You know, but now, uh, which those 95 have led to the five solos that I so and you, you talked about three old pastor Dan, so why don't you give us the other two and then tell us why you feel like today this is important. Well, right. like, it, but I guess the other two, you know, so, um, was uh, the sola uh, Christos, which is Christ alone, and mm -hmm. that, that he's the only way to heaven. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this, this, I've talked about the, the sole authority of Christ himself for people to go through. There aren't many ways to get to heaven. There's only one way, and that I actually affirmed that the, the deity of Christ, and this, uh, and this really affirmed um, the reality of the resurrection. Jesus Christ was the only person to have died and risen from the dead. Every, everybody else, including every other religious leader, is still dead. 
you know, and and, and, sure. th and then there's the sola idea gloria, which is for the glory of God alone. The apostle Paul says, whatever you do, even if you eat or drink, do so for the glory of God. And God says it, from the prophet Isaiah that I shall not give my glory to another. You know, and that affects every single individual. And the other thing is that it, it, it spilled out, like it says, into society. Um, if you can't open your eyes and, and see the effects of the Reformation. You can see it all over society. I mean, if you're in the banking industry, it, uh, it affects you. If you're a teacher, it, it, the Reformation affected you. It helped launch the Industrial Revolution. So every aspect of society in the church as well as outside the church. So if people are saying, hey, how does this affect me? How does this benefit me? We invite people to come to this event, and it will show how it affects you, why it's still relevant today, and how it's still important to you today. That is good. And this event, again, is when and where? It is It is on Sunday, October 29th, beginning at 10 a.m. at First Baptist Church, 6520 Pilead Road in Holland, Ohio. If you're on Facebook, it's hashtag 95 to 5 Reformation. And we're going to post uh, information, a link as well, on our Facebook page here, so our listeners can uh, find you that way as well. Well, and thank you. No, no, not a problem whatsoever. We are just glad to have you here in the studio today, and we appreciate the event that you were holding as well. And uh, if you're just tuning in right now, we have Steve Christie here with us, along with Pastor Dan Bellavia. Hey, very well done. Bellavia! Well done. Very well uh, done. Get a pat After on the back. The 95th time. <laughs> 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 one, of, one of the great things about, about what, uh, what we're going to be talking about is that this is not just the past. It's also the present and the future. Mm -hmm. And we think it could be the future of the church as we continue the work of reformation in the church and in our world around us. Thank you Amen. for joining us today. We appreciate it so much. You're welcome back anytime. Well, thank you. So thank let us you, know, Rebecca. And uh, we'll just be praying for this event. And you have many to attend. Thank you. Thank you.